All right, well, good morning again. <clears throat> so here we are in our Journey of the Heart program. We do this every year. Um, this is our pledge program so that we can have some idea what people are going to give to us in the year ahead so we can plan how we're going to spend in the year ahead. You know, none of this exists without your support, and we are very, very grateful for your contribution. Um, so I'm, this month I've decided, or for the month starting today, I've decided I would work with a book by Edwin Gaines. Edwin Gaines is one of the great prosperity divas of new thought, and we have her little book um, in the bookstore. Um, <clears throat> but as I uh, think about this, as I start to talk about this, what I think is really important is, is for us to remember that life is not about struggling and being unhappy and then dying. Nobody incarnated just for that. Your soul did not come here to earth to just live through difficulty and then poof, that's it. I think it's about appreciating and enjoying all that life has to offer us and, 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 the, and through joy really is how we glorify God. Um, one of the saints, don't ask me who because that's not really my field anymore, but one of the saints said uh, that uh, joy is the infallible presence of God. So uh, for us as students of the science of mind, in this teaching, God is not far away. God is within us. God is part of everything we see and do, no matter how mundane. And what's more mundane than money, right? We touch it daily. You know, all of our money says, in God we trust. So people often think and sometimes have baggage, what I'll call baggage stuff, issues, programming around that money is the root of all evil. How many people have ever heard that? Ever, ever, ever. Money is the root of all evil. Well, Mark Twain actually had a really good grasp on this a long time ago. He said, it's the lack of money that is the root of all evil. Right? Now, when we talk about prosperity and living an abundant life here at this church, we mean that prosperity includes everything. Like Siobhan said, it, it includes having a healthy body and loving, satisfying relationships and work that is meaningful to you, something you love to do. You know? and, and, and in addition to that, it includes money, all the money you need to thrive in life. So um, money alone isn't true prosperity, although I would certainly say that it is an important component of it. Like I like to say in the classes we teach, there may be other worlds without money, but this is not one of them. You know, here the game is, part of the game is we have to have money. So Charles Fillmore, who was the founder of Unity, said this, and I really liked it. Uh, he said uh, that this idea of tithing, of contributing to what feeds you spiritually, is based on a law that cannot fail. And it is the surest way ever found to demonstrate plenty, for it is God's own law and way of giving. Um, so I, uh, I came across this, I don't know, recently, and I've had it on a post-it on the table where I do my work, and, and it was this, that what a wonderful thought it is that some of the best days of our life haven't happened yet. Isn't that tremendous? I mean, as good as life has been and all the wonderful things that we have lived through and experienced thus far, because we teach that the nature of God, God that's everywhere and within us, is infinite, some of the best days of our life haven't even happened yet. I love that. That makes me so encouraged because I think, wow, it's been great so far. I can't wait to see what's ahead. I can't wait to see what else there is. Um, my hope is that this, this time together, these four Sundays, will, will change your life in a wonderful, affirmative, abundant kind of way. Many of you know that every year I go to Hawaii and I, and I study. I have a teacher in Hawaii. And something that he said to me a long time ago that made a big impact on me was he said, the ancient Hawaiian people did not consider you spiritual until you had mastered abundance because they felt that was an equally important part of having a spiritual consciousness, that you had to demonstrate that you knew how to, that you could always have your needs met. Now, many of us experience what I think of as a little divine discontent you know, but I think that that's a good thing, where we, design, we want our life to be a little different. We want it to be a little bigger. We want to experience a little more. We want there to be greater love in our life and things like that. Well, I think that divine discontent is God in us stirring up something within us that seeks to express in a greater way. You know, so I think it's okay. It is absolutely appropriate to accept your desires. 
You know, God does not want us to be denying our desires because what happens when we deny our desires is that we are denying a greater expression of the Spirit of God within us. So what does it cost us to not uh, prosper greatly? You know, I think it costs a lot because nobody really wants to struggle. You know, that God does not have a poverty consciousness. I say this all the time because people seem to think that God does, that God seem, the people think that God is invested in lack. Now, God is not invested in lack. God is the very principle of abundance itself. And we have to get that. You know, that was just where people's consciousness was at the time, that life was hard, so it must be because of God. Couldn't have had anything to do with them, right? It must be something to do with God. So there are invisible laws we teach in the science of mind governing abundance. And we want to learn to work with them and work with them really intelligently. And so I ask you this morning to think about what would true abundance in your life look like for you? And so yes, think about money, but also think about health and think about relationships and think about your creative expression and think about experiences that you would like to have. Just allow yourself to, to unhinge from, well, it's just money. It is money and it's so many other things as well. Now, I know if you're like me, and I suspect you are because here we are together in church, that, that you've had blocks along the way. Maybe you're dealing with some of them currently. And, and those blocks could be many, many, many different things. It could be something very simple as a lack mentality, you know, that I need to get such and such before I can have the life I want. And if I have, then I can, if I have what I want, then I can do certain things, and then I'll be happy, I'll be prosperous. But you know, that thinking is actually backwards, because what we teach in the science of mind is that everything starts in consciousness, so it has everything to do with how you are being. Who and how and what you're being on the inside is enormously important, and from that being, you will be impelled to take action. You will do certain things in the world. And then you will have more of what you want to experience in your life. So rather than thinking, gee, if I have this, I will then be a prosperous person, it's the other way around. It's what we have to be in consciousness first. We have to see ourselves as people who have, that we are connected right now, whatever our circumstances are, we are connected to an infinite, abundant source. If I really prosper, sometimes think, Sometimes people think, if I really prosper, I'm going to lose something or someone that I value. You know, my friends won't love me anymore because they're not going to prosper. Or that, you know, people will think I'm different because I prosper. But, you know, I think that um, this fear of loss just really connects back into that, that age-old idea of I cannot be satisfied. I can't have what I want. And the truth is, we can have what we want. I absolutely believe that's so. Now, can we have everything, everything, everything we want? I don't think so. I don't think so. Even Oprah doesn't have everything, everything, everything she wants. And I'd say Oprah's doing pretty good, wouldn't you? You know, I mean, she's, she's certainly an example of someone who's gotten a hold of the principles. You know, but I think we can have whatever we really, 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 really want. You know, because what we want that much, we will put the time and the effort and the consciousness into doing that work on the inside so we can experience more of that on the outside. You know, this, the feeling of, of not enough, there is not enough, I am not enough, I'm not smart enough, educated enough, young enough, old enough, skilled enough, 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 All right? You know, others have what they need to succeed, but I don't. So, so that, that, uh, uh, I'm not enough. I think all of those things. I think a lack mentality. I think fear that somehow I'm going to lose something or someone. And feelings of not enough are all huge, huge contributors. Now, obviously, here on Earth, in Los Angeles, or wherever you live, money is a good thing because it makes you comfortable enough to do what you came here to really do to do your bigger gift, to give your bigger gift to the world. Now, we teach in Science of Mind, and we talk about this all the time, that there are laws in the universe, that everything is energy. You know, and that means that everything, everything vibrates at a certain frequency. And so what's in harmony with your frequency? You know, what are we tuned into? Because that is what we are actually attracting into our life. My thoughts create my frequency, and that's what creates my reality. You know, so when I'm judging, whether it's just 
life or somebody who has a lot of money. The important thing to remember is that what we judge, we repel. How other people got their money is none of our business. It's my nacho principle. It's nacho business how other people got what they got. That's their consciousness. So other people doing well should just be an inspiration to us that we too can achieve the good things they have. So money, I think, is a symbol of freedom. You know? and, and so we have to start by being the vibration of what we want. We all know when we need to make a shift. Yeah? We all know that. We can all intuitively feel, boy, now is the time I need to buckle down or put a little more effort into. You know? um, and, and I think that for most of us, what has to happen is there has to be some reprogramming of our subjective mind. Even if you didn't grow up with money is the root of all evil, you know, it's in the race consciousness of our culture. Lack thinking. You know, Social Security is going to go away, and the stock market's going to disappear, and your retirement's going to evaporate. And all of, all of that is in the race consciousness. And we have to work hard to keep our thinking above that baseline. We have to work hard so that that level of experience doesn't become our experience. Mm -hmm. um, money, I think, is, um, well, so what I want to say is uh, because Edwin Gaines first chapter in her book is about tithing. And so tithing, you know, when we talk about it, a tithe, a tithe is 10% to the place or institution where you receive your spiritual food. I hope we are that place for you. Really, I do. And I, some of you are thinking, well, you know, I go here and I go someplace else. That's fantastic. Split it. That's the deal right there. <laughs> if two places are feeding you spiritually, then you give part of your tithe to one and you give part to us, I hope. You know, so what we're doing when we're tithing, I want to explain the principle, is that we are putting God first in our finances. And this is important to remember. Because doing so, when you put God first in your finances by contributing consistently on a regular basis, what happens is it expands your faith and your ability to stretch yourself and move forward and expand your vision of what your life could be. So, you know, money is like love. The more you give away, the more you actually have. How many of us know that about love? This is true about love. I'm not, we're not even talking about money now. We're not going to talk about money. Talk about love. How many of you know that the more love you give away, the more you have? That's how the principle works. So if it works that way with love, now we're going to talk about money. It works that way with money. Um, it's because, see, because love is a limitless resource, and so is money. So both were created by God to enrich our lives and allow us to live fully and joyfully and completely. You know, so the truth of the law of compensation is you cannot outgive God. So again, back to this idea of tithing. Well, ideally, tithing is one tenth, you know, back to where you receive your spiritual food. You say, well, my spiritual food. So where you are inspired, the place that teaches you, the place that reminds you of the truth and causes you to remember who you really, really are as a spiritual being. So the purpose of tithing is to acknowledge that God is the source of all our good. Right? And we are aware and grateful for that good. If we tithe, we can prove God in our lives and the windows of heaven open up to us. Now, God doesn't need the money. I know people always get hung up on that. You, you know, you give because tithing is the beginning of a discipline in giving and receiving. You know, if you're a big giver, that means you have to be a big receiver because it means the universe is going to give back to you in lots and lots of ways. And what tithing does is it increases our faith and pushes us through, um, through our fear in a conscious way. So when we tithe, we give back to the universe and the universe gives back to us. So this idea of tithing, it really comes from Genesis in the Old Testament, uh, in Genesis 14 with Abraham. But you know how we move through any fear is by doing it. You know? And so you start where you are, and I hope you will, and you do some amount definite, and you do it consistently. You will notice in your program today we included a card of intent. And we hope that this month you will fill this out and toss it in the basket for us so that we can come up with a plan for how we're going to do church and what work we can do in the year ahead. So, you know, when you tithe, what you are saying into the universal mind is, I trust in God. I trust in God as the source of my good. I trust that that source is infinite, that source is everywhere, and it's within me. Let's pray. All right, thanks.
So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, recognizing that God is our Father, Mother. And it's in this awareness of connecting with our Father, Mother, that we invite God's Holy Spirit, God's Spirit of wholeness, to take charge of our personal journey of prosperity and abundance. Together, we collectively let go of all that has gone before. And we now begin anew. I claim for each and every one of us that we are free and we are forgiven for any mistakes we may have ever made in the past. And we open ourselves now to expressing a brand new magnificence. I open myself to the infinite possibilities that are mine to choose. I accept this for myself, I accept it for you. I open myself to receiving all the goodness I can have and to all the greatness I can achieve. I invite God's Holy Spirit to heal our bodies, to harmonize our emotions, and to renew our mind, to fill us now with a mighty faith that empowers us and allows us to commit to be all that we came here to be. So we include our family members and loved ones in our prayer, knowing right where they are, God is, that their needs are met, they are abundantly supplied, they are loved and whole in every way. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world, touching all people, knowing that the source of good exists within the heart and soul of every being on earth. So we let our prayer be a blessing that rains down on all people, a blessing of peace and health and prosperity and love for everyone. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I do declare that we are blessed by being together, that our hearts and minds are opened, we are raised up, and life is good. So with a full heart, I say thank you, God. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say amen. amen.